Let me, so people who can actually understand what I was trying to say. So welcome. Welcome, you all. and Thank you for joining our webinar entitled Let's Talk Tinnitus. Our presenter today is Shazard Cohen, AUD, FAAA, lead audiologist and founder, Hearing Loss Solutions. My name is Lisa Hamlin. I'm the Director of Public Policy at the Hearing Loss Association of America, and I'm your host today. The mission of HLAA is to open the world of communication to people with hearing loss by providing information, education, support, and advocacy. HLAA provides people with hearing loss the tools for self-help, educates and advocates for the needs of people who have hearing loss, and promotes the understanding of the nature, causes, complications, and ways to address hearing loss. We offer educational information on many aspects of hearing loss, from technological and medical advances to coping strategies, hearing assistive technology, and more. HLAA provides a wide range of local and national programs and events, such as the Walk for Hearing and our annual convention. We also have a nationwide network of chapters around the country that offer peer support, education, and advocacy in local communities. And of course, we advocate for communication access um, from the national office. Please see our website, hearingloss.org, for resources on hearing loss and information on HLAA events. Before we even begin, I'd like to thank our CART provider for this evening, Whitney Riley. Thank you, Whitney, for providing the caption services for this webinar. If you have any questions, if there are any questions from the audience, please go to the Q&A and that button at the bottom of the screen, and then you can type in a question at any point, and at the end of the presentation, Dr. Cohen will answer the questions. I'll read them, and she will, she will write them. She will respond to them. Let me give you a little bit more about Dr. Cohen. She is the lead audiologist and founder of Hearing Loss Solutions, as I mentioned. Hearing Loss Solutions is an audiology clinic that strongly focuses on patients with tinnitus. She is board certified and a fellow of the American Academy of Audiology and the Academy of Doctors of Audiology. Dr. Cohen is a member of the California Academy of Audiology and currently is serving on the advisory board of California Speech and Hearing Association, District 7, as the continuing education officer. Dr. Cohen was the director of operations and lead audiologist for Desyncra, and I probably pronounced that wrong, but it's close, Neuromodulation Tinnitus Therapy System, that was in October 1st, 2019. Dr. Cohen received her Master's of Science degree in Communication Disorders Audiology in 2001 from California State University at Northridge and received a Doctor of Audiology degree from the University of Florida. She also holds an Audiology Board Certificate in Tinnitus Management. Thank you, Dr. Cohen. I appreciate your coming here, and I'm going to turn the screen over to you for your presentation. So let me do that, and then you can start when you're ready. Thank you, everyone. Lise, thank you for the beautiful introduction. I appreciate that. Uh, I hope everybody hears me okay. It's my first webinar. So I, if I go too fast or too slow, please do not, please do let me know. Do not hesitate. Um, okay. Well, let's start. I want to thank everyone for near to my heart in tinnitus. Okay, so here we go. We are going to talk about tinnitus solutions, and we are going to demystify the myth which everybody thinks tinnitus has no solution. Um, I'm hoping that my, okay, please help me because, oh, here we go. Okay, 
Let's uh, start by talking about definition of tinnitus. As all of you guys know, tinnitus is perception of sound in head or in your ears in absence of any external stimuli. So a lot of people think tinnitus is a phantom disorder. Um, it could be described as a ringing, buzzing, hissing, roaring. Uh, and I have even patients who explain it to me as if it sounds like a void, they hear a void, absence of sound. Uh, so regardless of how we define tinnitus, we can categorize it the same way. We have two main categories of tinnitus, and one is primary tinnitus, which means we do not know the causation of a tinnitus, and the second one is called secondary tinnitus. Secondary tinnitus is always associated with an ideology or a causation, a factor that comes before the perception of tinnitus. So usually when people complain of suffering from tinnitus, the major issue becomes, I, is this a primary tinnitus that we cannot give an ideology to, or it is something else which is causing that tinnitus? And if we are dealing with a secondary tinnitus, that means we can always go back and alleviate that cause which actually helps the perception of tinnitus. There are two things which we are going to shed a light on, and that is pulsatile tinnitus, which means that the patient actually hears the rhythm of their heartbeat in their head or in their ears. And that pulsatile tinnitus needs to always be ruled out prior to any type of a treat. Another category, and that is a bodily sound. Um, it could be that it's a spasm of a muscle which is sitting behind the eardrum, or it could be the popping of the eardrum going in and out due to eustachian to dysfunction. So somatic tinnitus is another thing which you is given to the patient. My slides, unfortunately, are not working. Uh, okay, so in order to figure out what is giving the, what is the ideology or where the tinnitus is coming from? I want everyone to realize that it could be that the causation could be of two different ideas. One is tonotopic. So that means each, think about keys of piano, which we go from lower keys to the upper keys. And every key has a different purpose and a different sound. So we have outer hair cells and inner hair cells, which those actually by any vibration of sound, the vibration of the hair cells causes us to hear. So any specific vibration would lead to specific vibration of the hair cells. Now, if we have hair cells which are damaged, we are going to actually have the brain perceive a sound which comes up and it's not of a good quality for interpretation. So that gives a causation for perception of tinnitus because our brain's job is to perceive the sound and associate the 
mean to the sound which is coming in and if the sound is not i'm hoping to see if i can have i have a message saying that you guys don't have my voice is that correct Dr. Cohen, this is Lisa. You've been fading in and out, um, but I, I'm hearing you now, so let's try to move forward. Okay, and if, I'll let you know if, if we're having trouble with the Okay, sound. because I'm, I'm sitting at the same location, not moving, so I'm hoping you guys don't have the problem. Um, however, my slides are not working right now. Um, try putting your cursor over top of the slides and then trying to move them forward after the cursor is there. If you would like, I can take the screen back. I can try taking the screen back and moving them forward. You just let me know when to move them. Let me, you want to try that? Okay, I'll move them okay, for you forward. You. You, tell me, you tell me when to move them. Next slide, okay, I'll do that. Okay, so um, sorry about the trouble, guys. We actually, believe it or not, we have been playing this game with each other at least and I about three times and we have never run into a problem right now. So here we go. All right, so continuation is that if the hair cells, if you look at some what the hair cells are missing and then we we have damage to hair cells then the sound that comes up to the brain for interpretation is not of good quality and could be perceived as tinnitus next slide please okay so this is a tonotopic representation of the cochlea and the brain. So not only our cochlea has hair cells which each one plays like keys of piano, rather our auditory cortex has a different association of, if, of each pitch that comes in. So if a pitch comes in, an auditory cortex gets stimulated, that's what we know that that is the sound which is coming in. Now, sometimes we, there is a new idea, right now there's a new idea in tinnitus treatment, and that is tinnitus is perceived by overstimulation of auditory cortex in one specific place. Dr. Cohen, we've lost sound a little bit again. I think what happens is you lose Wi-Fi every so often. The screen freezes and we go forward. I'll try to 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 let you know when that happens. You're going doing you're, you're back, okay? Okay. So I think you can go ahead now. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Okay, so if you can look, this is a left hemisphere and right hemisphere of auditory cortex, and you can look at the different coloration, which actually corresponds with the stimulation area in the brain. So next slide, please. All right, so one uh, idea about tinnitus, as I said, is that we think tinnitus is actually perceived in the auditory cortex due to overstimulation of the brain. And functional MRI is a way for us to actually research that. And in, if you look the head, which is in the left hand side, you see the area green. And that is a patient who is suffering from tinnitus. And the right side actually shows that after we treat tinnitus, the overstimulation is not there and the auditory cortex becomes small again. Next slide, please. 
Okay, so we are, as I mentioned, the pathophysiology of tinnitus could be of two kinds. It could be a cochlear damage, which is a damage to the outer hair cells of the cochlea, or it could be a cortical damage, which is hyperactivity in the auditory cortex. Now we have one, another idea which is coming in and it's getting proposed by scientists and that is that actually tinnitus could be due to the way that the sound gets transferred from cochlea all the way up into the auditory cortex. And that is called the demyelination or central auditory fiber disorders, which is coming up. And this, again, right now, what is the actual ideology or causation of tinnitus is a still up for debate. Next slide, please. All right, before I start to talk about the tinnitus treatment, I want to talk about tinnitus and what are the red flags that people should be paying attention to. Tinnitus is a red flag if it is associated with a unilateral hearing loss or asymmetrical hearing loss, means one side of one of the ears perceives tinnitus or perceives a sudden hearing loss or sudden change in the hearing loss um, in recent years, in recent months. So I want anyone who suffers from tinnitus or hearing loss or has any sudden changes to their hearing, see an audiologist or an ENT physician um, as soon as they can, uh, because there are a lot of treatments that we could give to the patient who has that issue, and hopefully then the tinnitus doesn't become a permanent issue. If there is pain or vertigo, if there's any vision problems, uh, and if there is pulsatile problem, uh, pulsatile tinnitus, or if there is any rhythmic problem to tinnitus, that uh, I want people to refer to a physician. Next slide, please. All right, so we are here to debunk a few myths about tinnitus. One of them is that you have to learn to live with your tinnitus or tinnitus is a curse of sins previously committed. The other is that there is no treatment to tinnitus. Um, one major one for me at my pit peeve is that people are told, wait six months before you seek treatment for your tinnitus. Um, actually, the research shows that patients who wait six months, the rate of their success in alleviating tinnitus is much less. Um, not true. And tinnitus will drive you crazy? Definitely not. Next slide, please. So I'm hoping that everyone after the end of this uh, webinar will agree with me that these are all myths and nobody has to live with tinnitus. So we are going to talk about treatments of tinnitus, which is currently available. Next slide, please. So I have categorized tinnitus management options to two categories. One's based on neurophysiological model, and the other one is based on neural dyssynchrony model. Neurophysiology is about tinnitus as a reaction, emotional reaction to a sound which comes in. Hyperactivity and dyssynchrony model talks about a model of tinnitus as it's perceived in hyperactivity in auditory cortex. And we will go through all these details of each therapy, but I want you to think that neurophysiological model basically talks about dissociation of the perception of tinnitus and the emotional reaction to tinnitus. 
This means if we actually take the control of our tinnitus and we do not negatively associate tinnitus and we do not react to it, the tinnitus becomes like our shoes that we wear every day. Once we put on our shoes, we feel our shoes and as we go through the day, we really do not feel our shoes anymore. The hyperactivity model talks about, as previously mentioned in the last slide, about the overactivity in the auditory cortex and all the treatments which are offered talk about the ways that we can actually take away this, this synchronize all this overactivity. And then because the overactivity is not there, the tinnitus gets treated. So next slide, please. So in this slide, again, I have different methods of tinnitus treatments listed in a different category. So they are the same treatments, cognitive behavior therapy, tinnitus retraining therapy. These are the ones which actually follow the psychological options. Then we have instrumentation options. Those are the options that we actually offer a treatment through our use of an instrument to the patient, like hearing aids, levo system, and neuromodulation therapy systems. And then we have acoustic options, which basically we offer sound to the patient which because the brain starts perceiving a meaningful sound, then the tinnitus, which is on not a meaningful sound, takes the back seat. So all these therapies, this slide and the last slide, offer the same therapies. The only difference is the categorization of them. And I want, now we're going to go through each category one by one. Next slide, please. Before I start talking about um, acoustic therapies or sound therapies, I want to talk about what could effectively be done in your everyday model, that um, daily life that you can actually uh, try to see if you can decrease perception of tinnitus. Dietary modification is one which I uh, usually talk to my patients about. So we usually start in my private practice, I usually start with dietary modification and asking my patients to keep a journal of what they eat. The reasoning is that is, uh, there is an idea behind tinnitus perception that if we actually increase the hydration in the body and if we increase um, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Cohen, we've lost you. Oxygen system. That's okay. it. I'm here. Do you hear me? Okay, we lost you at the part you were talking about hydration. So if you could back up just a bit to talk about that, and we'll, um, your your sure. Wi-Fi is back. Sure. Sure. Okay. So going back. Um, uh, so in my private practice, I was saying that. always start a Donna a food journal. Sorry, so, we're losing we, you again. Okay, you're back. I'm sorry. Okay. So research shows that if they have some sort of an allergic reaction in the body, we actually have patients complaining of perceived perception of tinnitus. Sodium intake, salt, is one of the main areas research which indicates that increased sodium intake 
actually is associated with perceived loudness of tinnitus in a lot of patients. Coffee is another food modification which I request my patients to make. Um, I need to tell you about coffee and that is it's not about caffeination or decaf coffee, rather it is the chemistry of coffee which is causing the tinnitus perception. So a lot of patients, if they stop the intake of coffee, they would possibly perceive a decrease in perception of tinnitus. Chocolate, strawberry, dairy, uh, all of these alcohol, white sugar intake, and turmeric are the other factors which we I try to actually have my patients pay attention to. And again, the idea behind the dietary modification is that there is some sort of an hyperallergic reaction of the body. So, Dr. Cohen, your, your Wi-Fi is frozen again. So, tinnitus would take a back seat if all these... We still can't hear you. Uh, we're getting sounds, uh, yeah, and I, I, I think it's a Wi-Fi problem. Oh, now we've lost you all together. Okay, so um, be patient. We may need our presenter to reboot or to get a stronger Wi-Fi signal. There she is. She's back. Okay. If um, Dr. Cohen, if you can monitor the captions and you can see where Whitney loses you, and that's where the rest of us can't hear you either. Are you able to see captions? It's still frozen here. I um, see the captions. End. I see the captions. Okay, so if you see where Whitney cannot hear you, that's where no one can hear you, okay? Okay, I think we're good. You can try again. We're talking about coffee. Can I have the next slide, please? Oh, okay. So you lost me at coffee. So basically, everyone, I apologize for this. I have no idea what is happening. Um, so basically, this slide talks about things you can cut out of your diet in order to see if you see any positive, positive results in decreasing the perception of your tinnitus. Coffee, chocolate, strawberry, and turmeric are all um, things that you can take away from your diet to see if your tinnitus loudness or frequency of perception could get decreased. Next slide, please. Okay, one thing which we, I always ask my patients to do is to hydrate often. Green tea has been used in treatment of tinnitus in Chinese medicine over many, many years. The reason for use of the green tea is number one, the fact that green tea is a diuretic. That means it will, if there is any excessive fluid buildup in the body, we can actually use green tea to get rid of it. Sometimes if we have many years or clear I draw, asking patients to try green tea, um, we actually see a decrease in perception of tinnitus. So I want everyone to try the green tea with uh, talking to their physicians first uh, because of the factor that the green tea is diuretic and in people who have diabetes or liver problems or kidney problems, they actually should 
uh, use green tea after talking to their doctors. So next slide, please. All right, so the life modification that I want you guys to think about is of two categories. Increasing the blood flow to the cochlea, which in turn causes the oxygenation of cochlea. Uh, the reason is this, that sometimes, like in cases of Meniere's disease or cochlear high drops, if we actually increase the oxygen flow to the cochlea, we see the decrease in perception of tinnitus. What are the things that you could do in order to decrease the oxygenation? Is light exercise, walking, dancing, yoga. All of these not only are considered as a light form of exercise, rather because they have involvement of the good hormones, we actually see positively affecting the perception of tinnitus. I have actually a research in development which talks about uh, dancing and decreasing perception of tinnitus. And we are using dancing because of a few factors. Number one, as it involves our good hormones, uh, the happy hormones. The second thing, it's because it involves positive use of acoustic, which is sound. And the third, it's because it's actually increasing the blood flow all over the body. Uh, last thing which I ask everyone to try to see if they would positively affect their tinnitus is actually listen to tinnitus. We have been telling our patients to ignore tinnitus. And there is research coming out of the field of psychology which talks about if we actually have patients effectively listened to tinnitus, the negative emotional reactions go away. And that is the cause for the tinnitus to take a back seat because suddenly the tinnitus is not the enemy anymore. So I hope all of you guys, by trying these few things, uh, you will see very positive outcome in your daily life. Now, if none of these work, for next to slide, it's going to talk about the specific... All right, uh, environmental modification before we get to any acoustics is avoid quiet. Quiet is the enemy of tinnitus. Use music, nature sounds, any meaningful sound in the background in order to have your brain avoid the perception or fixating, fixation on the perception of tinnitus. Overexposure to loud noises, such as police officers or people who listen to loud noises, is one of the most important suggestions that I have for everyone. Uh, the next suggestion that I have is to avoid maskers. Maskers are not a treatment for tinnitus, and a research came up about two or three months ago that actually shows that the usage of maskers is aging the brain faster than what we expected. So in my own private practice, I try to ask my patients to avoid maskers. And I usually suggest use of music or nature sounds. Uh, what we don't like about maskers is that they all use cochlea at one usually parallels with the damage to the that specific frequency in cochlea so we do not want to overstimulate that damaged area and we want to sort of increase the frequency bandwidth that the cochlea is using the sound next slide please is a cognitive behavior therapy, CBT. CBT is a psychological method of dealing with tinnitus. And the modified version of CBD under different titles are being used in audiology offices. CBT, uh, cognitive behavior therapy, is 
what urologists and come to treat tinnitus. And Dr. Cohen, we've lost you again. When the, we uh, have issues, an audiologist. I'm here. Do you have me again? Okay, you're back. All right, so when we have offices that a psychologist and an audiologist do not work with each other, then we have to choose a treatment when the audiologist can provide this direct. And TRT, tinnitus retraining therapy, and progressive tinnitus management, PTM, both are one of those um, CBT-related treatments that we are offering. Next slide, please. Tinnitus retraining therapy, which is based on the idea of habituation, was introduced by Dr. Jastrobov. Dr. Jastrobov is the lead researcher in tinnitus and tinnitus treatment. And his idea of tinnitus therapy basically talks about disassociation of tinnitus and negative emotional reaction to tinnitus. This method usually is based on education of the patient about what tinnitus causation is and how we can actually take tinnitus from something that the brain perceives as enemy to something that the brain actually associates with, oh, I know what is happening, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. So TRT brings tinnitus from an idea which the brain has to fight with in order to keep us alive to, oh, I know, quote unquote, I know what is happening, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. The emphasis of this method of tinnitus treatment is habituation. Habituation is when we all get used to something. So basically think about wearing our shoes in the morning again, or the first day that we get married and start wearing a wedding band on our fingers that, you know, it feels odd. But after so many years, if we don't have the wedding band, that's when we miss it. So we hopefully try by using habituation method and the Jastrobov model to bring tinnitus from an enemy standpoint to, oh, I know what that is. I'm going to just let it go and not pay attention to it. Next slide, please. Progressive tinnitus management is a behavioral modification. And this treatment is being used in VA in most of our veterans which are coming back. And we see a great success. This treatment method is used, is introduced and used by Dr. James Henry of VA Portland. And if you need information regarding this method of therapy, if you just put James Henry, Pro, a lot of data shows up. And I have actually my patients doing this research prior to I actually offering it in the office for them because once they start reading about it, usually after the second or third session, they have the control of their tinnitus and they don't need me anymore. So I'm hoping that this becomes a method that you guys could all research. Next method. Next slide, please. Tinnitus activities treatment is another behavioral modification that is offered in tinnitus clinics. This talks about basically things that a patient could do in their normal daily life 
in order to decrease the negative emotional reaction to tinnitus. So basically, this method of tinnitus treatment concentrates on, for the lack of a better word, homeworks, things that you could do in your daily life that would decrease the perception of tinnitus or takes attention away from the perception of tinnitus. So in this method, patient is encouraged to find their own solutions through counseling and appropriate situational uh, results or scenarios that the therapist and the patient come to an agreement. Um, most, I would say, that I see success within my own private clinic is with sleep or concentration issues. Uh, tinnitus activities treatment um, is very, very useful when we are trying to have a patient find solutions to the things that they could do to alleviate issues of bothersome tinnitus during concentration time and sleeping time. Next slide, please. Neuromodulation therapy is the latest development in world of tinnitus therapies. This method of therapy talks about cochlear overstimulation, I'm sorry, uh, about the uh, auditory cortex overstimulation. So through the neuromodulation therapies, what we do is that we try to use specific binary systems in order to regenerate auditory brain pathways or use the brain plasticity in order to overcome perception of tinnitus. So neuromod neuromodulation therapies that are currently being used are, of, are offered by two companies. Next slide, please. The first company is Desyncra. Desyncra, which has coordinated research neuromodulation, offers the therapy through an iPod, and it has its own specific headphone. Um, this system of therapy basically has four calculated tones, which the audiology the audiologist is trained to program this device based on the perception, the specific perception of tinnitus of the patient. This device is FDA approved and currently is being used in many clinics in the USA. And the session of the therapy for this is about 36 weeks, the course of the therapy, and it requires a few visits to the audiologist in order for reprogramming as the tinnitus perception changes. Next slide, please. Neuromod, Neuromod of, of Berlin, of, of, of Dublin, Ireland, is another therapy which is using the same method of neuromodulation. Neuromod actually uses tiny electrodes, so it has, we have bias stimulation. It's not only an acoustic signal, rather, as you see in the next slide, you are going to see that they actually have a little electrode that the patient puts into their mouth and locates it on the tongue. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, so as you see that white tongue part, sits on the, on the front part of the tongue and the patient is listening to the acoustic signals. So through delivery, by modal delivery of the elect electric shock, very small electric shock, and the, uh, and the sound that is perceived in auditory cortex, we see that patients tell us that the tinnitus has better, um, or actually tinnitus is decreased, the loudness perception is decreased, and it's not as often. Neuromod currently is not offered in USA and only has a CE seal of approval, which is for Europe. Uh, next slide, please. 
Level system is forceful habituation. Level system is developed by autoharmonics through cellular cyanide, and it's available in USA. It has the FDA approval, and it's basically forceful habituation to the sound of tinnitus. So this, if you see the next slide, can I have the next slide, please? If you, if you sort of pay attention, Levo system uses the same iPod and the sound that the patient hears is uh, the same as their own tinnitus. So in this, the use of this device, we actually have the audiologist match the sound that the patient hears as closely as possible to their own sound of tinnitus. And because the patient is forced to fall asleep to their own tinnitus, when we take the sound away through the daily life, the brain is already trained to ignore the tinnitus. Next slide, please. Hearing amplification technology is another method that we deal uh, with tinnitus. This method of treatment talks about or basically uses the concept of stimulating other parts of the brain and other uh, outer hair cells. Um, hearing amplification also be works because we increase the perception of sound and take the attention away from tinnitus. Uh, I want to bring a little bit more attention to using amplification as a tinnitus treatment because a lot of offices are using hearing aid as the only method of treatment of tinnitus. And I, in my private practice, believe that this should not be it. Um, hearing aids are very, very effective. However, other solutions should be used in addition to use of an amplification. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm going to jump over this and I'm gonna let everyone read it. Um, uh, basically, uh, the reason is this, uh, we don't have time and I want to be able to answer some questions. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay, acoustic sound therapy are all the masking systems that we use. So maskers are, here we go, that's good. Okay, so maskers are any kind of sound that is used in addition uh, to use of a system which introduces the sound. So here, are, okay, I lost caption. Okay, are you guys still hearing me? I'm sorry, it took me a minute to unmute. Um, I lost you for okay, a minute. So Can I guess you speak good. now? Mm -hmm. Okay, you're good. Yes, go okay. ahead. Okay, yes, good. All right. Okay, so acoustic therapy systems are any system that you use regardless of how you introduce the sound to the to the ears or to the brain. Um, I want to I want everyone to think about this. It could be a hearing aid, it could be a headphone, it could be notch therapy system. So regardless of the delivery method, any time that we increase the sound in the environment, we actually can mask the tinnitus perception. Next slide, please. Next one. We're going to jump over these few slides because we're gonna leave 10 minutes for everyone to answer. Okay, so surgical treatment of tinnitus, and this usually talks about secondary tinnitus. Secondary tinnitus could be treated once we fix the problem which is causing the tinnitus. So if the tinnitus causation is because of the lack of hearing, cochlear implants, bone anchored hearing aids, or middle ear implants, could actually benefit the patient because we increase the perception of regular environmental sounds. Next slide, please. 
you are going to see all the alternative treatment methods which are listed in this slide. Uh, all these alternative methods are the methods which are not proven through scientific studies. Rather, we see a lot of patients reporting back to us that these methods of therapy are proving to be beneficial. Uh, I'm going to just leave it at that. I want everyone to just have a list of these things which are available. Um, but if anybody needs to ask me any specific questions, I will release my email and you can actually send me email so I can answer your specific questions. Uh, next the slide and last thing before I actually revert to questions would be who can treat tinnitus? I want everyone to know that main treatments of tinnitus lie with audiologists who hold a certificate in tinnitus management. So American Academy of Audiology has recently offered a CHTM course, Certificate Holder Tinnitus Management, for all the audiologists who are interested in dealing with tinnitus. Um, I want everyone to pay attention to this detail because audiology, like any other profession, has general practitioners and specialists. And if there is only one thing that you walk away with today, that is, please find a specialist who would be able to help your specific situation. If you walk into a clinic and the only option that they offer you is a hearing aid, that office is not a tinnitus clinic. In all the offices which are associated and work on tinnitus, the therapist or the audiologist have multiple methods of dealing with tinnitus. And I would love to hear your feedback. If you find an office which is advertising as a tinnitus treatment, but actually is not offering anything beyond hearing aids. All right, I'm going to wait to hear some questions and I would love to answer some of the, the questions. Again, I wanna thank everyone and I apologize for all the technical issues that we have been having. So thank you so much uh, for actually muscling through all our tech technical uh, problems here. Um, I do have some questions here. I will say this to everyone. Um, Dr. Cohen has said she will release her email. You can also email Hearing Loss Association of America if you have questions that we don't get to, and then I'll forward them to Dr. Cohen. So the first was a very basic question, which was, um, what is a hair cell? If you go back to the beginning of the slide, in our organ of hearing, cochlea, we have little go. This is it. That's it. So, in organ of hearing, which is cochlea, which is located under our brain in our inner ear, this hair cell, rows of hair cells, uh, is the vibration of these rows of hair cells is what is causing the perception of sound. So basically hair cells are the coding mechanisms of our brain for sound. Next question, please. Okay, so we have a question from somebody who says, I saw your slide mentioning the use of CB, okay, CBD. CBD, I'm sorry, it's my eyes here now, with CBD. tinnitus. Okay, okay, you know what we're talking, talking about, about then, okay. Yeah. She says she found, or this person says they found a PubMed study and have tried dosing low 5 to 15 milligram on a daily basis, and I've had great improvement. I had already made the dietary changes because of cochlea high drops diagnosis. So do you have any Correct. comments about that? Yes. Uh, again, this method of treatment falls into the category of anecdotal reports. 
Uh, right now, we are just in the beginning stages of doing clinical research studies and scientific research studies about the positive or negative effects of CBD. But from what I see in my own private practice, many patients report that use of CBD positively affecting their tinnitus perception. And what hence it's because tinnitus and anxiety go hand in hand. What CBD does is that it decreases the anxiety and the frontal lobe involvement of the negative emotional reaction to tinnitus, and that causes the decrease in the perception of tinnitus. Okay, I think I have a, uh, time for another question here. Why do I perceive tinnitus in the right ear, which is this person's deaf ear, and it is the left ear with severe to prown profound hearing loss, or sometimes equally in both ears? Okay, so this is a very good question. This actually is where we talk about the different category of the tinnitus. So if we have damage to the outer hair cells, tinnitus becomes the phantom perception. And that is where we have the overstimulation of the auditory cortex. So this person, when you hear the tinnitus, and that's when we talk about that patient could actually benefit from the use of acoustic neuromodulation therapy. And when we talk about the patient who has a hearing loss and a tinnitus, those are the patients who actually could benefit from acoustic therapies. Okay, we are coming up on 359 here. Um, again, please feel free to email um, you can email me, lhamlin at hearingloss.org, or email us at inquiry at, at hearingloss.org, and we will make sure. And Dr. Cohen, did you want to say and something we, too? Yes, please. Actually, we have a new Facebook page that everybody could go and actually place their questions on. We have a group of tinnitus therapists to answer questions on that page. And that is tinnitus professional support on a Facebook. So if you go to the last page of the slides, all the information is there. Tinnitus professional support on Facebook. We would love to answer all your questions. Okay, I'm going to try to put that up now. Oh, okay, sorry, went too far. Let me see if I can go back here. Okay, oh, I lost it again. Um, but we do have to end. So I want to thank you so much for, with all our technical problems that you got through this, I want to thank Whitney once again, who was fabulous in picking up what things that I could not hear, and I'm sure others could not hear as well. Um, there's the page where you can contact um, Dr. Cohen. And again, thank you so much, Dr. Cohen. It's a lot of really wonderful information. That's a pleasure okay, to bye -bye be now. amongst you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now.